In the NFL, I am told that there are certain audible calls that are made when circumstances demand them. I'm not talking so much about the quarterback who changes the uh, play that they're running at any given moment. I'm, I'm thinking more of those times when there's a threat of a turnover. You know, when the, the holder for the kicker uh, fumbles the, the, the snap and they have to call an audible that says the kick is off and everything's gotten confused and fallen apart. Many years ago, I was a field hockey referee. And when I say many years ago, I mean 40 pounds ago. I remember refing the one team that had a, a rather aggressive way of playing, particularly the midfielders. When the team was on defense, the midfielders were playing a very solid defense. But when the team was in an offensive mode, in an attack mode, those midfielders pushed up way further than many others. To compensate for that, the coach and the team captain, whenever there was a turnover, whenever they would lose the ball or they would change possession unexpectedly, the coach would scream from the sidelines, flip it, flip it. I guess it was the coach's way of sharing with their players that there had been a turnover, that they quickly needed to scramble to change from defensive mode to offensive from being on the attack to suddenly getting back and defending that goal. Flip it was the coach's cry. Now I share this business about audibles, about changing the flow of the game, about moving things around very quickly because I suspect that the disciples lived in a world where Peter or somebody could have oftentimes been yelling Flip it. Jesus went from the triumphant entry into Jerusalem to being arrested. Flip it. We go from the holy moment of the Passover to within hours Jesus wearing a crown of thorns. Flip it. From the cross to the empty tomb on Easter day. Flip it. From 40 days of teaching after the resurrection to the ascension, as Jesus is lifted ever so gloriously into the heavens. Flip it. And so the disciples stand there. Jesus, having just ascended into heaven, they stand there with mouths open, staring into the open sky. They're filled with questions and wonderment. Is this the time the disciples had just said to Jesus? Is this the time to set up shop in the throne room? Is this the time when we should be counting on you to deliver the kingdom of Israel? Is this the time? And Jesus flips it and says, it is the time for you to go and to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Forget the throne room. Flip it to the ends of the earth. Is this the time for a church to enter a building project? Flip it would be God's answer. The world will look at what we are doing here. The world will look at our efforts to add on, to build, to expand the house of God. To create a space that will be used for the fellowship of the believers, but also in service to the wider community. They will look at us in a time that is dominated by fear and economic frailty. 
and say those people are either absolutely nuts or they are filled with hope and faith in a living God who will not abandon them. Flip it, we say. Don't look back. Don't stand there with your mouth open looking up. Instead, look ahead. Our behaviors define our purposes. Building and expanding and engaging in a capital campaign in the midst of the turmoil and the hardship and the difficulties of our current moment in time makes a witness about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. The power that has been promised to us by our Lord and Savior. Power not to rule, not to be rich and wealthy, but the power to witness. And that is why we build. That is why the building will be expanded. To expand our witness to tell the story far and wide of the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. The day will come when truckloads of lumber and pipe and wires and all kinds of stuff is going to get dumped off on the other side of this parking lot. But we have no fear because there is an architect, there is a builder who understands the plan that takes all those components and puts them together in the most marvelous way so that when it is all completed, there is a structure there that will be a blessing from God, a blessing to our community, a blessing to this congregation. But know this about being the church. Things don't always make sense in the way that we would hope that they would because there's always these moments when suddenly there's a, well, there's a turnover. We think things are going well. We think we've got it figured out. We think we're positioned just where we need to be and suddenly something happens that, well, flips it all around. And being part of the church is like having truckloads of lumber and pipes and wire dumped on your doorstep without an architect's plan. And we are called upon to make it up as we go. To build this thing on the fly. To hold together this thing that we call a congregation. This thing that we know as a church. Because it will always be facing the next surprise. The next turnover. The next unexpected moment. Therefore the church is always constantly reinventing itself. Worshiping in a municipal, municipal building was not the end game. Obtaining a piece of land was not the end game. Building this structure was not the last chapter of this congregation's story. We, the church, are constantly reinventing. It is the design of the ascended Jesus that sudden changes will force us to act and to behave and to embrace new ways to flip it. But know this. We are not alone in our efforts. Jesus has promised that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and will guide and direct your ways and your behaviors so that even putting up a building in difficult times becomes a powerful witness to the faith of the people of God and to the love that God has for us and for this, this, this wider neighborhood. Do you know that in an NFL game, at any given time, there are two football helmets on the field that have a green dot on them. 
Those are special helmets. Those helmets, those helmets with the green dot, signify that there is a radio transceiver inside that helmet. Those people far away up in the booth, as they call it, have the opportunity to talk to the person wearing that helmet. They're not alone in their decision making, in their call playing, or in what they do. They are listening all the time for direction, for purpose, for information. We don't have green dots tattooed on our heads, but we do have a forehead, uh, a cross, that's been marked on our forehead at the time of our baptism. Been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Jesus Christ forever. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talking to us from the booth, guiding and directing us each step of the way. The people of God here at Living Waters Church have been listening to the proddings of the Spirit that came upon the disciples, the Spirit that said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, even, even to the ends of the earth. And so we build. And so we dig. And so we remain generous so that God's mission will be accomplished here. And I bet when we get to the ends of the earth, the Holy Spirit will be there asking us once again to change, to adapt, to flip it. The Holy Spirit has placed in our hands the tools and the resources for us to build the church anew. May God bless our efforts and our continued work to be the people who witness. Amen.